You may be seated, Mr. John. Yes. I react that we just where y'all come for. Hallelujah. Oh, I sing in the name of not so the old ones would do it. In the name of Yeshua. Oh, I sing in the name. For oh, the name of Yeshua, come on, Mama. For there is no other name given unto us whereby we shall walk in. Come on. What will sing? Oh, I trust in that name. Oh, the name. Of your shoe, oh, I trust in that name, oh, the name of your shoe, oh, I trust in that name, oh, the name of your shoe, oh, I trust in the name of your shoe. And we will go a little further. Only in that name was I raised for all of my sins. Only in the name of God, sure, I was raised up from all of my sins by the power of my boy, he raised us up in your shoes, name. Oh, I've been raised from the death of my sin. And mama will shout out, oh, I love the name of your shoe. Oh, I love the beautiful name. Oh, I love the name of Yeshua. What a beautiful name. Oh, I love the name of Yeshua. What a beautiful name. Oh, how beautiful is the name of Yeshua. And the old timer would say, I will trust her in that day until he calls me home. I will trust in that name until your call calls me home. I will trust in that name of oh, the old name of Yah, in the name of Yahshua, will I trust till he call me home. Then the one waiting on the promises of Yah will sing this. Oh, I'm waiting to go on home. I'm coming in the name of Yahshua. Oh, I'm waiting to go home. Trusting in your sure's name. Oh, I'm waiting to go on home. Trusting in the name your sure. Oh, I tell you it won't be, it won't be very, very, very long. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. It is something about this Torah that awakens me. It causes me to become aroused to denounce the restraints of my flesh because I know that in my carnal logic there is an enmity, a perfect hatred an animosity toward Yah and so that the things that you would do according to his commands there's a will present in us that say you don't do that 
for his name is excellent. And even with the Melachim, when the beasts of the field hear the name of Yah, they stand in awe and rejoice. But a nation of his elect, we take no sense of the beauty of his characteristics, his excellence. Because there's one thing that I am certain of, that Yah, he inhabits, he lives among the praises of Yisrael. And we are a nation of people unless we are spurred to the moment. Then there is no flow from Yisrael to acknowledge. Those old ones would go to their places of assembly. They need, needed no kind of musical stimulation. They would just begin to sing. Oh, mama back there just stomping the heels on that hard wooden floor. And she had seen how Yah had brought her, even in all of her ignorance. And Papa sitting there, he did not allow her to see his tears. But he cried silently. As he pondered all of the magnificent beauty of Yah, what he had brought him through in the midst of that course of time. Of the great calamities, he wrestled with his doubts and his fears, the uncertainties. But yet in that moment of time, all of that was laid aside. And he would brach, he would esteem Yah just for another day that he had granted unto him. I will not be silent for him. I was saying to the Zakin as we walked toward the tabernacle, I said, even though I was a young, ignorant man that was unlearned, it had no sense of what we call Mishracha family or friends. I said, there was something that I knew, even as a foolish, immature, young individual. That in the beauty of my bond, even with my issue, I knew that there was something that was greater than what I saw and perceived among the masses of the people. I said, from a young man, my heart was dedicated to the vow of that purpose and that cause. And I've never gone back on it, had no one to teach me. But he had from a child put that in my bosom. He had written that in the table, uh, tables of my love, that we could be an excellent symbol and an example for his purity because he is still married to a backslidden slut, a heifer. And uh, he does give us a little dignity. He calls us a backslidden heifer. When the heifer slides back from the bull, she doesn't want to embrace him. The heifer is one that has not been embraced by the bull. The heifer is one that has not brought forth seed. And he still classifies us as a backslidden heifer. A backslidden heifer. A backslidden heifer. And so it's only by his justification that he makes us sadiq. It certainly isn't by any works that we have done that we call Zadach. Israel is a corrupt nation of people because we have learned the way of the world. We have embraced the activities of darkness. That's why we're up, we're down, we're sideways, we're moody, we're uncertain. Something in our psyche is unbalanced. It persists for the moment, then get over it the next moment. It ought not to be found among the people of Yah. 
Even as a young fool, my Ima, I knew that that wasn't of Yam. We got this moment of esprit, we we're happy. And the next moment we're in our dungeons of darkness because that is where our minds have driven us to that path. And the way I interact with Yisraya is the way I interact with Yah. You can say what you want to, but that's the truth. We greet you all that have joined us on the Shabbat, our distant Ach, our Ach, that we there in Bergshead, Scotland, is Mishpaha as they gathered with us on this live broadcast, our precious Ach. David and his Isha, Susie Anya, there in Britain, as they join us for this broadcast today, we greet you all in the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we send you the Kadosh kiss of greetings in Yahshua's mighty name. And to you that are listening here in these states of the wicked cauldron of darkness, the united devious power of darkness that has been fomented and raised by the beast's government conscience that is the sure sign and the seal of the mark of the beast and man because out of this vile nation is purported, esteemed every kind of vile insult that is against Yah. The minds of the people of this nation, that she tends to spread her tentacles to every nation upon the earth to corrupt, to corrupt your children, to corrupt you, to corrupt everything that you touch. That we go about lusting in our own uzen, in our own eyes, in our own desire, what we perceive that is right. For if any man loves the war, we are da, we know that the love of the Abba is not in that man, that woman. For all call the summation of the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes and the lust of one's own gravity of his own bazaar, his Buzzetry flesh and the pride, the hubris identity of one's own character that they are exuded or exalted above all and others. For these things are not of Almighty Yah. And if any man operates by that spirit, he is not a child of Yah, and that is. The very motive and the power of the beast's identity. That man has resolved himself. That man has resolved himself. That man has disacquainted himself from the almighty one that's made him. It is a mark of superiority or supremacy. It is a mark of one's own indignant ways that one creates. Out of the very doctrines of darkness of the beast, a spirit that roams without any kind of identity. That's why we are a nation of people that we fluctuate. Fashions and styles, what we accept, our likes and our dislikes, we're up, we're moody, we're twisted as hell that's the spirit of a beast. You will see that the mother of a goat will let the baby milk one moment. And then that same beast will turn her head and ram that little one in the sides and knock it to the ground. That is the nature. That is the marking of the beast. When Yah speaks to us, we will kala, we will curse him. We will speak vile against him. How? In our words, it is our actions. It is our disposition. It is one thing that my grandmother would know and my Ima. Although she had no knowledge of the power of Yah, 
She could look at my countenance and say, boy, what's wrong with you? She would say to me, you better get that spirit off of you. They had the ability to discern, to detect, and they knew. You could not hide anything from them. I don't care how you try to hide it. You could not hide it. So the powers that be in the fermenting to solidify their government. So it speaks to the mind of the nations of people. And say to them, well, the mark will consist of a chip. And so the ignorant bastards, I call them the zero of the bastard slip. Because the wicked will go astray even from one's inner womb. As they are born, they go astray. And even as your tries to birth the power of life, Yoshua HaMashiach, in this wicked generation, they have no ability to hear to what he says, to receive it, or even acknowledge that it is of the Most High. They don't have the power to do that. And this mark, this earth, it is a vow of commitment. That their minds are vowed, and there is no turning in them at all. It is like one that has spent 15, 20 years in prison. And I will never forget one of my uh, school chums, my friends. His mother was very kind to me. His name was Clark West. And I remember that his Ema said to me one day, she said, David, as he was brought down in the line of fire by the police, he said to me one day, Mama, I will never go back to prison again. I will die before I do that. And he died trying to avoid the just recompense for his vile and wicked actions. So there was a vow, an oath, an incense in his conscience, in his forehead. And so when the police officer saw that, he knew that this one, you had to take down. You had to kill because if I don't kill him, he's going to kill me, so it is with you. He's going to destroy, he's going to root out. He's going to kill because there is a fermented government. The government of a beast that rises up against its own master. Isn't that what the beast does? The beast will charge you in the field. The bull will overrun you and stomp you to death. And you said this is a generation in their mind, in their conscience, they are trying to override the Torah. We are trying to supplant it with a law that is so vile, corrupt. It is so insidiously, wickedly, because it has its origins in the work of one who did not abide in Torah. And that is why he is a murderer and a liar. Because there is no truth in him. And in that mind, in the power of that government, there is no truth at all. There is no light of truth. It is a self-indulgence. It has a mark. It has a spirit that is adamantly against Yah. It doesn't resonate the light of Yahshua. Hamashiach. It has no Eda. No powerful utterance of the testimonies and the testimony of Yah. And one of the most profound testimonies is that the life of Yahshua, because of his presence, because he lives, then we live and we can face even this formidable government that we will face. 
I said to my Ach the other day, I said, I just did not feel comfortable as though that I gave us the most excellent service or as being a servant on Shabbat, last Shabbat in my closing, because I want to redirect my attention again upon that to bring something of much more enlightenment that you may understand the very profoundness of the call, the voice. When Yah speaks, as Arzakhin brought out the other day, he speaks from his call, his voice. And what you hear out of one, when one speaks, uh, when one ama or utter speaks, he speaks the volume of his heart. And Yah speaks from the volume of his lamp. And so he utters out in profoundness unto us as a nation of people through the very prominent power and the life of Yahshua, and yet we don't even hear Yahshua. We are a people that's ikad shemakul yisrayayachichad. We should hear the voice, the fullness of his voice. And so when we hear the fullness of his voice, every word that he speaks, uh, it is taher, it is pure. It is not only clean, it is not only right, but it is ceremoniously clean. It has been cleansed through the process of his mind, because it is the mind, the rush of Yah, that spoke unto Moshe, spoke unto the Levi, unto Aharon, that this is the process of the cleansing of Yisrael. So every word that he speaks is good. We cannot disnull or negate, reject, not give attention to everything that Yah says. We cannot do that, Yisrael. We must give attention to everything that he says. You cannot produce the persistence in a certain palatable dish for the tongue unless the recipe stays persistent, consistent. I was listening the other day and uh, one said that the reason that the French chefs are much more dynamic in their array of preparing food that extracts a delight from the palate, the latter part of one's tongue, is because of one thing, whereby the American chefs do not do it. He said this, they are precise, consistently and the required measurement of everything that must be incorporated in the dish. It never changed. And not only that, but they weigh it out. Whereby the American chefs don't do that, a pinch of this and let it go. No. When great, great granny came up with the recipe for that barbecue chicken, she knew what she had done. It was through experience, time, years that she had incorporated the preciseness of every ingredient that not one ingredient overpower the other but it accentuate and draws from every herb, every spice that you use that one is not overbearing on the other. And so we allow our emotions to be overbearing or on the government of Yah. There's a reason why. This is a mark and it is the mark of the beast and it is the mark of man we must understand the combination of the six 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 all we've heard of our lives is just the number we must understand i pray that you grant us today to go into even a more simple simple depth of this knowledge and understanding that we may understand all things that he wants us to understand. Again, I want to begin this teaching, although I may use some of the same in scripture, I want to use them again, Yisrayam. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Revelation, Giliana, as I want to begin there, and it is vitally important that I do. In the book of Revelation, Gilyana chapter 17 and verse 5. 
Yoko Han says, as he began to move in the dynamics of the Ruach of Yah, he was taken out of the element of this natural nature of man. Because we persist in our natural proclivity, and we know that our natural proclivity, it has a hatred for Yah. For the carnal mind, it is enmity against the Torah of Yah. And the reason why it hates, despise, reject, so near the Torah is because it is not subject, it will not submit, it will not will the will of Yah, the pleasure of Yah. That is what his Torah is, to grant unto him great delight in our fellowship. And because of that, it is not subject unto the Torah of Yah. And then he puts the exclamation mark on it, neither, never, indeed, can it be. It can never be subject unto the Torah of Yah. And that is why the proclivity, the drive, the desire, the passion of this beast's mind. You watch the beast in the field? I watch... The billy goat, when I feed them, when I put the hay out. And although there is amp for everyone, I will watch this beast consistently. Even the little ones that have come out uh, of the seed uh, of his igniting uh, in that uh, chamber of that beast. He will run his head and charge and knock them down. And even the one that has just brought forth the little you, he will drive his hard head into her side and knock her down. And the little you, barely able to walk, he will knock it down. And that's the way the beast's mind is. That beast's mind controls everything. Although there is enough, he still wants it all. And he will travel the course of that consistently. You will see that even among those that have produced the little you. That she begins to eat. One gets close to her. And she begins to ram her head into that one. That's the issue. We're going to take our rush. The power of our own insight. Our knowledge. And we go to butt heads with Yah. But I tell you. You're not going to win Gisraya. It is the mark of a beast. It is filled with some of the most vilest and unclean things. That's why our minds cannot concentrate. We cannot meditate. That we said in thy Torah, I meditate day and night. Hell, our minds are, are in, in the distribution of the beasts of this world that he present unto us. And our minds are on the concepts, the lust, the desires, the passion. And that's the truth, Yisrael. Yaakahan says, as I began to move from this range, this confinement of my flesh, as I began to denounce myself and to see the ill of a piece of flesh that was not even worth even considering, he began to open up my spiritual learning my eyes my eye not only did i see this thing in a mental and understanding the mental perception of it i saw the vast deepness of it in the spiritual realm and i saw things that even the utterance of my words cannot tell you the preciseness the exactness uh, and even the very superlatives to describe it. So in the best way he could, he spoke in a language that we could try to draw from that. Gileadna chapter 17 verse 5. He saw this beast. This power that... Let me begin in verse 4. He said, and the woman was clothed in this regale of the most beautiful, attractive colors... And there are things that our eyes see that we cannot even, uh, we cannot remove our eyes from it, Israel. 
So her kalura, they were beautiful, they were attractive, uh, they were purple and scarlet. And it says, and she, uh, and she was gilded, or she was girded with gold uh, and precious stones, ebon. She had the stones and there is something vital uh, to the ebon, the stone. That's why Yahshua is the Rush Pinna. He is the chief stone, Yisraya. Pinna, he is the corner stone. He is the Rush, the head. And it all begins in the Rush. He saw her with these precious stones and pearls. And she had this vessel, a cup of gold in her hand. It was full of uh, pollution. And every kind of impurity of her horns on the earth. Everything that was in her bloodline, in her vein. We drink from the cup of Yahshua HaMashiach, do we not? Do we not go to the living system, uh, system uh, of, to drink the living waters? Is not the Torah the living waters of Almighty Yah? Is your shoe not the Torah of Almighty Yah made flesh? And so her cup of every kind of vile pollution, every kind of unclean thing. It is one thing that the cup of cool water is satisfied the belly, doesn't it? But it must satisfy the mind first. The belly does not appreciate it unless the mind speaks and says this is sufficient. This is more than satisfying. And so the mind speaks today, that's all right to accept. A man can be a woman, lies. A woman can be a man, lies. Do you see a nation that nearly 80% of this nation believes that it's all right for a faggot to be a dog and to walk around serenading like he's a woman or a damnable twisted butch bull dagger to act like a man? Or one does what one perceives in their own mind, by their own faith, by their own conscience. Do you not know that, Yisra'ya? And they have the ability to describe, to present their God unto others. And so there's a cup that a nation and the nation of people are drinking out of. And it is a cup of pollution and vileness. What is whoredom? What is the zana? It is an unfaithfulness. It is one that has no sense of commitment and faithfulness unto Yah. And when our minds are controlled so adamantly uh, by the manipulation of our own flesh uh, that governs us that we're not satisfied with you uh, and having uh, the excellent report of your Shua and Mashiach, it doesn't give us the strength or satisfaction that we need because he lives. We can face, listen, tomorrow is just not in the morning. I can face the next second, the next minute, the next hour, and then the next day. You understand? This is the power of the beast to draw out, to exact, to destroy any element of truth. Any element. And he has demise or put in place a plan to bring about the de demise of Almighty Yah, but it shall not work. It is one thing that I'm glad that Yah is in control. This, this was scripted in the plan of Yah before there was ever an earth. This was scripted in the plan of Yah before we and anything was ever thought of. He doesn't have to think of it. It's there. Yah is just there he is. Period. Period. That's it. Our thoughts are not the thoughts of Yah. As far as the heavens above the earth, so are our thoughts, our concepts. Different than the thoughts of Yah. So in our natural minds, you can't reason with his mind. We must reason with him out of the Torah. And that's why every book is vital to our reasoning with Almighty Yah. That we, he will show us and we can see in that reason uh, why we are the reason uh, of his promise. Uh, and we are the reason uh, and he is the reason that we are here. We must understand that. She has a vile cup, Yisra'ya. Verse 5. And upon her forehead, her mesach, was written and striped hatab. There was a name written there. And it was lots 
or mystery bevel, the secretive motives and the underworld powers that control a confused mind. You find people that are confused, they will say that that one is demented. That one has a devil in them. You've never heard that expression? She is the mother of all mysteries of darkness. Every satanic type of activity that tries to construe the power of the identity of Yeshua. And you find that today that there are many that are rejecting. And that have denounced Yeshua HaMashiach. We had a fat beast of a bastard to stand here. And now he has gone that way to reject Yahshua Hamashiach. What do you say to him? Let him be damned. Damn him. That my mind, my conscience, my thoughts are, are closed off from a man like that. I will not pray for him. Why? He told us to pray for our enemies. He, tell, he tells you nowhere in Torah, he tells you nowhere in Torah to pray for his enemies. And when Omar becomes an enemy of Yah, he lays his hands to the plow, he turns his back on Yahshua, the bastard is not fit for the kingdom of Omar Yam. Because when one becomes the enemy of Yah, the mind is seared and demented. He doesn't even know Yah. He has no conscience of Yah. His conscience is seared. He tells us to pray for our enemies. He's not my enemy. He's an enemy of the Most High. You understand? Is Hashatan the enemy of Yah? Is he the most formidable foe against Yah? Is he the one of some of the most insane, dastardly deeds against Yah? Do you pray for him? Do you pray for him? You don't pray for the enemies of Yah. And that's why we need the discernment of Almighty Yah to know who and who is our enemy and how to pray. Hallelujah. I don't back down on that. I'm not taken down. Our concept of Yah has been twisted by a dirty this whore. By this mind that has been trained by this whore. That's why they're full of lust. That's why they're full of greed. That's one of the most pronounced uh, attributes of man or the beast six. Uh, the beast shows just want every damn thing. As hell and the grave uh, are never for neither can the heart of man uh, be satisfied. That damn Billy Goat will beat them down to the ground to get everything. When the lioness hunt the beast down and bring it down to the ground. It is the male, the beast, the dominant power that ravish the beast and eat until he's content. And then when he rests a while, he doesn't care about the little ones eating. It doesn't care about even those that have hunted the beast down, fill his belly. For one purpose, that there is a progeneration. And that's why the powerful oligarchy or the rich entities of hell, that's why they say, fill our troughs. We're going to make you poor and ragged, destitute, full of death. And we will see who you will trust in. Us, you're going to trust in this mystery that you call upon. And that's the truth, Yisraeli. So it begins with Rush. The mark begins in the training of the mind. Let me move quickly. She is Bavel, not the Gadol, but the Rah. Gadol is an expression of the greatness, the excellence of Yah's power. He is Gadol. And Ra in the word Ra, greatness, when you see that, that is not an attribute in the sense of to express the excellence of Yah. When you see the word Ra, it is talking about abundance, numbers, much, many. So this whore, she is Bevel the Great because uh, she has the nations and the multitudes uh, under her control. Uh, she has the numeric supremacy of the numbers uh, that she says to Yah, how do you fight against that? He says, with my za'am, with uh, the very anger of my indignation, the wrath of my indignation, my af. So she has uh, 
and she has the numeric numbers. But Yah is Gadol, he is splendid, he is excellent, his Torah is splendid. There is no writings, there is no philosophy, no books that can match the excellence of the wisdom of Yah's Torah, Yisra'ya. And so the enemy Yah grants unto him, the enemy, the chance, the power, the will, and the purpose to draw his children that the light of his children may shine. And she is the mother of Za'am. She is the mother of uh, halotry uh, unto Eba in the earth. A mother always produced, doesn't she? She is the birth chamber of where all things come from. Life begins in the chamber of the mother. So this religious whore, she has trained the mind, she has birthed our minds. You can take that little child, you can take any of them uh, and put them in front of a television uh, and let them begin to watch and see immediately how it begins to tr control them. It takes away all their, uh, their sense uh, of emotion, their control, and they are absorbed, they are mesmerized, they are magnetically drawn, they look conscious, and their minds are taken over immediately. We are a wicked generation. We don't give a damn about yeah. We're dealing with the mark. Six, the power to control by a religious manipulation of gods and powers and lords and show them. By the mercantile of the earth that our hearts are not satisfied with anything. Not with ten suits, ten pairs of shoes, fifteen. Yeah. Our lust extends beyond the ability to be satisfied. And by a government of power that takes, manipulates, destroys everyone. Have you ever met people that will have much and they see you and they ask for that or they want that? Those that just like the goats, they have much but they don't give a damn about you. They will not help you. They will not give to you. That's wicked. How much do you have? Knowing that they have more... And they will take advantage of you. That is vile. I said that because of this, especially with the little ones. You think I am lying? Put them in front of a television. And see how the magnetism of that, the alluring power, even us as adults. See how it captivates us and draw us under the delusion of that. We're talking about the mark of man. The mark of the beast. I found as... I don't look for articles, but when I saw this one, I want to read this, and I'm going to proceed into something that will open up our understanding just slightly, the door. And once the door is open, allow your sure to come in and sup with you. Allow the Ru'ach of to come in and dine with you. But I want to read this article quickly here. It's small, it's not much. I kind of took out of it what I wanted you to hear. This is an article by Michael Snyder of BlacklistNews.com. He begins, and I will do all I can to read it precisely without interjecting any kind of thought or scripture basis of this. It's difficult for me to do that. But let me see if I can do that, Yisraya. It says, back in 1983... Approximately 50 corporations control the vast majority of all news media in the United States of Hashatan. Today, ownership of the news media has been concentrated in the hands of just, of just six, S-I-X. For this mark is the mark of the beast, a beast, and man. It is the mark of the beast. It is vital that you understand. You're talking about less than 30 years, Yisraya. That these verse conglomerates have been reduced down. Why not four? Or three? Or two? Six? 
just six. Just six. And it calls them incredibly six. Let me read that again. Today's ownership of the news media has been concentrated in the hands of just to signify, to make no doubt of it at all, just six incredibly powerful, kuach, powerful media corporation. Just six. Not seven, eight. It was reduced from 30 to six. Just six. Yah has put his seal of approval on that because it must be gone in the mind. Listen, Yisrael. These cooperation behemoth. Did I talk about the behemoth last week? They call them behemoth. They call them beasts and monsters. This is not my writing. This is Mr. Snyder's. These six corporations, uh, they're behemoth. They control the vast of all and most of what we watch. Hear, read every single day they control it that's why we should not be given ourselves unto searching and looking this and that listen i will never allow the spirit of this internet to become predominant here i won't allow it you can go out there and do whatever you want to but here i know i know what I, the internet doesn't improve any of our lives it doesn't make us rich make us sit there and look at some of the most damnable stupid things we don't grow, we don't, uh, we don't accentuate the power of Yah. Hell is worse than the television, we're lazy. A physical being, uh, I said, Yah, if you grant me one last thing in life, just grant me, I do that he grants me the ability one day just that I have time to write and study the Torah in ways to bring out books and booklets to assist Yisrael. That's one reason I try to keep myself physically sound so if he grants me that then i will be able to perform those things my physical exertation is not going to keep me alive it's by obeying the commands of yah moving on quickly here these cooperation bohemians control most of what you watch hear read every single day they own television networks Cable channels, movie studios, newspapers, magazine, publishing housing, music labor, even many of our favorite web sites. That's why the damn my face and my space, all that damnable vile mess. They go and they trot through the millions of different ones uh, and they incorporate the same kind of damn vile and filth uh, and they see one that they want to emulate or they're inspired by and they incorporate the same kind of damn uh, repugnant vileness uh, and they become their friends. It's none of you are. They control all of that. They control what you put there, how you think they're bohemoth. I bring it all out. They control your mind. They control how you think. What you think of that, you don't give a damn about ya. There was one that called me the other day and said, Rea, I know that I am not right. I know that my heart is not right. I know I haven't walked right with Yah. But this individual that calls you and tells you that he loves Yah, you ought to go to his MySpace or whatever the face is say on that all he talks about is the lord jesus and god and say yet when he calls you he presents a different picture and so they only let those are the same spirit of them into their little space it is right my son they control all of that sadly most not most man this will have to beg your difference 
He said most Americans don't even stop to think about who is feeding them the endless hour of this vile news and entertainment uh, that they constantly, uh, he says, ingest. Hell, they have the mind, the power of this world, this mark of this beast. It has the minds of the people. They don't have the ability to think. They don't even ponder how this is manipulating my life. As a young foolish man, I will watch men and their wives. I will watch children. And I will see men do things that I thought were apartheid. They were to my advantage. I said, I'll take that. And I'll incorporate that in my life, into my marriage. And so I learned through the process of trial and error. And that's what I did. So when I saw men being dirty bastards against their wife, I said, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to be a partaker of that. When I saw this religious-minded people uh, denouncing y'all, battling against things uh, that they had no understanding about, I said, I won't mess with that. I'll leave it alone because if it's of any truth, uh, it will come to pass. I will see it down the road. I'll just keep traveling. Okay. He's acting like a fool because they talked about the Shabbat. I'll, I'll keep on traveling. Hallelujah. Most Americans don't really seem to care about their own media. He is simply saying to me that they don't even give a damn about their nephesh, their lives, their children. They don't give a damn. They don't care. They have no conscience. But they should. The truth is... That each of us is deeply. Do you hear that? When something is deep in us, Yisra'ya, it is not surface. When there's something deeply rooted in us, we don't see it on the surface. When there's a depth of wickedness and darkness, you just don't see it. This mark, uh, it is something that is deep in the hearts of the people. Uh, and the average individual, not average, 99.9% .9 of the people will not see it. Uh, only those that are spiritual and have the seven ra'achim of Yah. And I will prove that out before I close the day, Mazachim. I will prove it out. They don't even see. He is a man that has no knowledge of the power of Torah. And yet he writes an article that is so profound that most people don't give a damn and they will not even read it. I will go down a channel of hundreds of articles and only one that I would take time to even read. Because I know the manipulative power of this day and the hour. It is controlled by the powers uh, of Hashatan. It is to turn every heart, every mind because, uh, away from Yah because he is trying to find the remnant, uh, the Bahir, the Zira, the chosen elect, the choice of Yah. We cannot pollute our minds that way, Yisrael. Yeah. We not. The truth is that each of us is deeply influenced by the messages that are constantly being not poured out, but he used the word pounded, pounded, driven, driven, pounded, pounded into our heads. Six powerful conglomerates. A pounding this into our heads by this mainstream media. The average American, I'm glad I'm not the average American, watches 153 hours of television a month. <laughs> Do you all hear that? How many hours in a day? Come on, talk to me. How many hours in a day? It's 24. So one day is 24 hours. Two days, how many hours? Three days, how many hours? 72. Four days, how many hours? 72. Come on, 24. What is that? 4 days, 96 hours? 5 days, how many hours? 24 hours, 116. So you're talking about in one month, one watches an average of a week just watching. We are damn sick people. We are stupid. And they don't spend two hours a month in the Torah. You will go to hell. 
I don't give a damn what you say to me. That's the average American. That's the average watch 153 hours of television month. First thing in the morning, they got to turn it on. That's their stimulation. Something is twisted there. Six corporations, these powerful behemoth, bohemoth, behemoth, beasts, control the logics, our thinking, how we process things. And the Torah doesn't control any damn thing. It doesn't control our lusts, how we process things, our actions, our deeds. That's why we're moody as hell. We up, we down, we twist it as a damn beast of the field. You tell me, beast, you have put a, you have brought forth two sheep out of this, and then you ram the hell out of her? You ram the hell out of the, the little ones? And that's what this man is doing, causing us to negate our responsibilities unto you. I'm going to teach and preach today. You can fall off all you want to. You don't have to hear a damn thing that I say. I don't want nothing sugar-coated. I don't want nothing that's spicy. I want something to drive something in me. To expose every kind of damn hidden thing that I try to hide. I want to expose the depths of and the deepness of my own mysteries of darkness. We get that we want to act like the damn fools we are. This wicked one doesn't give a damn about us. This government doesn't give a damn about you. Moving quickly here. We don't realize how much we are deeply influenced by the pounding into our heads by the mainstream media. 153 hours. Someone divide that 24 by 153. What, what is that oxymoron? That's, that's six days, six plus days, almost a week. It's, it's, it's close to a week. Huh? Hallelujah. We watch 153 hours of television a month. In fact, most Americans began to feel sense uncomfortable if they go too long without watching or listening to something. If they don't get the television, they don't feel right. It is one thing that many, when they have left this place, that's the first thing they do. Give them a damn television. That's a fact. I don't give a damn what you say. I don't care if it's your son, your daughter, your mama, your grandmama. I frankly do not give a damn. That's the first thing they do. That's the first thing they do. They ponder, I, I haven't watched this in a long time. I wonder what, that's, come on now. Controlled by six conglomerates, six powerful bohemoth controller. It is the sign, it's the sure marking of the beast. And I will prove it out as I teach. I will prove it out. I will prove it out. You see, you can't lay up in the bed all morning uh, and expect to get some kind of informative revelation for Yah where you enjoy sleeping more than you enjoy the Torah of Yah. You can't get that. You can't get this when you have no time and no energy, Yah, to ponder the Torah of Yah. When there is no delight in you to seek out the very face of Yahshua HaMashiach, but we seek our interaction with this uh, most prominent bohemian of darkness, uh, this powerful uh, six corporation uh, that controls, injects, uh, pound the way you think daily. You have no power. We began to feel uh, as though we lost something when we can't. You divide that for me, Oxymion? Divide 24 by, divide 153 by 24. What is that? What? 6.4 a week. Like I said, a week we spend a month. If you spend one week without sleeping, without eating, you sit there. Yah, forgive me of my wickedness, my sins, my vileness. Forgive me. You sit there for a week. And you can't pray one hour. You sure said you can't even pray with me one hour. But you can sit for damn seven days and what? It is the spirit. I... Tell that, my friend, 6.4, you need 20 hours to just complete it. And that is a spirit. You understand seven, what they will call the cardinal number of completion of perfection. You're just 
A few ticks away from the mind being totally controlled by the entities of hell. And I'm going to prove that in the teachings to come. There is so much to this. It's not going to be done in a few sessions. It's not going to be done in a few months, a couple of months. But we're in the time of the end. We're in the Ocker Reef. And we must understand and prepare our minds. And an entity of hell like this controls seven days of your life a month. Come on, Gisraya. It gets twisted in us. In fact, most Americans begin to feel physically uncomfortable if they go too long without watching or listening to television or something radio. Sadly, most Americans have become absolutely, absolutely, no doubt about it, addicted. They have become addicted. It's like drugs. It controls. You know what drugs do? It began to alter the chemicals in your mind, doesn't it? When one is addicted, it's not the physical body crying for it. It is the mind. It is the mind that has been altered, isn't it? So it cries for the dainties of the beast. It cries for the delicacies of the vile mind that is against you. This labad cries. I gotta have it. When one cries for sugar, it's not because uh, the body is crying for sugar. It's the mind. The mind said, I gotta have it. When crying for that hair run, Snorting that king or smoking that crack. It's the mind. Says you got to give it. Do you hear that addicted? This man doesn't even know what he's saying. He really doesn't. But I'm going to break it down, all right? They're addicted to news and entertainment uh, and the ownership of all of the news and entertainment that we crave. Crave? is being concentrated in the hands of a few. Listen. And fewer hands each year. It is the year this year, the year of the power to control. And that's what the enemy is doing. Yah has granted that. He has given the rulership of the world's power into the hands of the wicked, as what Eob said. For Yah has granted, he has given over the control of things into the hands of the wicked for, for a season. I'll show you why. I'll show you why. Hallelujah. It says the six corporations that collectively control U.S. media today, Time Warner, Walt Disney, Viacom, Rupert Murdoch Corporation, CBS Corporation, NBC Universal. All of these corporations are controlled by what we will call Jews. Every last one of them are controlled by what you will call Jews and those that associate Yisraya with, these are the ones that control these corporations. Though the big six, that's what the article says, the big six absolutely dominates. When one dominates, there's nothing, no one is left standing. When Money Mayweather dominates a fight, the other fighter throws no punches. He toys with them. They toy with our minds. They play with our minds and our emotions. That dominate completely, dominate completely controls news and entertainment in the United Snakes of Hoshatan. But even those areas of media that the big six do not completely control are becoming increasingly concentrated. They got their hands on that. Whether it's your cell phone. They're doing everything with these damn cell phones. That's, I don't like them. I don't use them. I use them when I go out and that's it. I don't carry them on my waist. I don't damn the cell phone. And this is a generation because they think that's a status symbol. You are stupid as hell. You are dumb to think when this, the damn radioactive contents that are trying to fry your brains and kill you, you are ignorant, man. They got these smartphones that can track your every move and everything. They got software through spyware on your computers. Hell, they know how. They outread one day some time ago how that even the, the, the software that they have, that they can, even, uh, can even, uh, even determine the thoughts of one's mind. They can re read it how? By the expression, by the lines, uh, by, by even the perspiration. There's a different perspiration when one goes out, uh, when one is angry, than when one is, uh, is exercising. This is the power of the beast of this government. 
to control the mind, uh, to rise, to raise up against Yah an army, thinking that it's going to bring Yah down. Uh, just like the book of the wars of Yah, we must understand uh, the strategy of Yah, the power of how you fight against this form of a foe that Yah has raised up. And we're weak at beggary. We don't have the power. Our minds are given over unto the control of the things of darkness. There's no, no unanimity, no ikhah, no oneness among Yisrael. He brought them out, as I said to Yosipia and Yawasadak, we were talking. Uh, the other day I said, my Akha. No, he made us ikhah. He brought us uh, out into one culture, one way to have one mind, uh, to think in oneness, to think alike, uh, to act alike, to walk alike, to dress alike, to do the same thing alike. And what has this media done? Taught us individuality. Taught us to be individual. That's why we're sick. Like pigs. We're ragged, we're naked, and we're poor, Yisraya. Don't go nowhere. I'll get to some, to some scripture. Don't worry about that. Hallelujah. They're controlling everything. For example, Clear Channel now owns over 1,000 radio stations across the United States. Do you understand that? That's what Rush Limbaugh is on. Clear Channel Radio. Do you understand that? When they're talking about 1,000 radio stations that they own, they're not talking about something that would uh, reach this little area. They're talking about something that's powerful. The PEGs in Charlotte. And all the powerful stations. Stations in New York that reach 20, 30 million people. You think they give a damn about one little radio station out there in Wyoming where they have a population of half a million people? Hell, their boroughs in New York got more than half a million people. This is how ignorant we are. When they talk about major markets, they're talking about San Fran. They're talking about New York, Chicago, Philly. That's the major market. They're talking about Miami, Florida. Atlanta, the greater. Do you understand that the city of Atlanta, the population in Atlanta, in the city, is not even as large as the city population of Charlotte, North Carolina, right up the road. Do you not understand that? But it is what they call the greater Atlanta, where about there are three to four million people there. Charlotte has double the population of Atlanta as a city. And Charlotte is not even a major market. It is not an international city, but it has more population. So they control the mind and what springs from those stations. And many of those stations own the satellites and they own satellite stations to override stations. This little thing we have here, that's no station. That's not even a station, really. That's something that FCC did to, to appease their conscience for how they have maligned a group of people and people that they had no strength uh, to, even, uh, to even share in a community environment uh, something of wealth. That's all that is. For example, Clear Channel now owns over a thousand radio stations across the United States. Companies like Google, Yahoo, Microsoft are increasingly dominating the internet. Isn't that something that some little kid come up with something like Google's, and then all of a sudden the conglomerates of power say this is worth, they draw attention by making it, these cats billionaires overnight, and they don't have a damn thing. They have nothing to, Google produce not one damn thing at all, what they call a search engine. And yet overnight they become billionaires. Facebook, MySpace, and all of a sudden they raise up these Wicked boys they call phenom of intellectual. That's no intellectual uh, uh, pattern there. It isn't. And they make them billionaires. They say the corporation is worth $8 billion. And then someone like Time Warner say, we're going to give you $20 billion, just like they did with Mike Kuban and all of these young cats of what we call uh, uh, the revolution there, Simicon, uh, Simicon Valley. Made them rich. The Gates. The Stephen Jobs, they made them rich. And yet all of their technology doesn't advance no one. It doesn't add strength to us at all. And it is a mind control. And people, everyone is mesmerized by them. They look at them, oh, wow. Oh, wow. And yet they don't look up to Yah and say, oh, my. Ah, wow. Ah. 
You tell me this tree is budding in due season? Ah, they don't give a damn. But it is the big six. That's the biggest concern. When you control what, listen, what Americans watch, what they hear, what they read, you gain, you gain, you gain, you gain a great, a great deal, a great deal of, of con. Control, you gain a great deal of control over, 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 over what they think. You have the power to control what, listen, I know we, we think we are bright. And we think that we are magnanimous and powerful. Yet her short tongue, as he did with. He tried Cain and Abba al Khabel, and yet he controlled the capacity. That's why he said to Yoshua, it's one profound thing he says in there, because he knew that Yoshua was the Rush Khana. He didn't know the exact point. He says, uh, if you're mighty like that, then take this stone. Take this stone. Take one like me. Take my heart, that I may be able to supply bread to the nations of people. Take this stone. To take this thing. Uh, why? Because all the gods of Israel, were they not wood and stone? Uh, sure they were. That's why we need men to labor, Yisrael. Listen, I'm not a lazy man physically. I will work with the best of them. But if you ever grant me the time or season where I can just there are things that my mind cannot even prepare itself to do it because when you have to worry about this little thing, I don't want to have to worry about nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to have to run nothing here. I don't want to have to run nothing. I he says to my Isha this morning, I was studying out a matter. And when she came in and did something, it just threw everything off because there was a collective thought process. And the things as I saw, things as I read, this added up and that and that and that. I said, oh, ma! I didn't realize until I got over here that I missed it. One of the most valuable things that I wanted to incorporate here, I missed it because of the distractions. Because of that. Because of the distraction, I missed it all. But that's all right. I got sufficient here that will. Can you get that little girly? All right. Let me finish this because I want to get into the Torah. Again, it said, but it is that the big six are our biggest concern when you control what the United States of Hushatan, United States of America, watch. Hear and read, you gain a great deal of control over what they think. Wait, where do you think from here, don't you? We think from our rush, and they control the way we think, the way we act, the way we perceive. They develop our conscience, they develop our minds of our children. You control what they think. They don't call it programming for nothing. Uh, I just got that one. You all get that? I'll explain to you. See, what they do, they have programs, don't they? And they program their stations. So they're programming them for a certain market to program our minds. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. They don't call it programming for nothing. Back in 1983, it was bad enough that about 50 corporations dominated the United States media. But since that time, the power of the media has rapidly become concentrated into the hands of fewer and fewer people. I'm going to stop there because I want to move on in the Torah. I want to direct your attention back to the last verse, one of the last verses I read on last Shabbat. Here in the book of Shemuel, 1 Shemuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 49. <clears throat> this is of great significance here. It is of great power and understanding. I wanted to bring us back with greater understanding Yisraya on the uh, Urim and the Tomim, but I'm going to teach that next week. I want to deal with one aspect of this teaching here today. I kind of hastily brought those two together as I read this. First Shemuel Shemu chapter 17 verse 49. 
It says that in this powerful expose of Yom, when the kingdom of hell that was expressed in this Philistine, that Yah had raised up one whereby his throne shall always be. Your sure is the pinnacle. He is the one that shall continuously set on the Hesse, the throne of Dawid. And there was one that troubled Yisra'ya, that backed them down. And this vile whore today, she troubles Yisra'ya. She's incest. She's a Yezebel. And she has an Ahab, a fool. For what she call a man, he's weak. He's shiftless. He's a cowardly damn thing. But you see the feminality in all most of these men and what you call mega whore houses. They become effeminate. They dress that way. They become a cauldron, a place of habitation for some of the most vilest, unclean spirits. The fags, the fagites, and all of the bastards and the beasts of hell. They ridicule you. I'm not going to... I'm not going to speak highly of them. I'm not going to use superlatives to give them some kind of strength or nurturing. I'm not going to do that. You can, but I will not. And so when this formidable foe rose up against Daewit, he told him, he said, I'm going to have, he, he let Daewit know, I'm going to have your head, boy. I'm going to take the strength of Yisra'ya. I'm going to remove uh, the Rosh Pina. I'm going to remove it. And that's what the powers of the spirit of beast is trying to remove the head. That's why we are commanded to let the same mind, to let the same mind that was in your sure be in us. We must allow that mind. It is a rich mind, rich in Torah, revelation, spiritual uh, uh, power, spiritual functionality of what Torah commands and what Torah speaks unto us. And so this one that she's full of abomination. What is on television today? Is it not some of the most abominable things? They got men kissing men. You can go to the internet. I am very careful and selective because you go one wrong place. You will have faggots coming up on your screen. You will have all kind of vile, unclean things. You will have some of the most vilest pictures. You open up that damn gate. You got to throw that computer away. I have never. That has never happened to me because I don't go. I don't go looking. I don't go looking. If I look for anything, it's something to research something, a word or something uh, that I can utilize the dictionaries and things like that. That's my limit. And that's the truth, Yisraya. Hell, you can go over there and look on my history. We can find out. In terms of this account here in 1 Shemuel, Shemuel 17 verse 49. It says, and Dawid, he put his hand in the bag or the sock, just like the Urim. And I'll bring that out next week because I must get to the validity of this point today. And he put his hand there and he took out not some stones, but he took out a, an event. A stone, the chief stone, the stone to take down the very authority, the rule. There's only one Rush Penach. There's only one cornerstone. And if your shoe is not in the perimeter and the perimeter of everything we do in our minds, uh, then we're going down to the gates of hell to find. What is most expedient and appetite for us to satisfy our wickedness and every kind of corruption. And it is one thing about the mark of this beast power. He's going to supply everything that you need, Yisra'ya. He's going to supply everything to corrupt your mind, to corrupt your thoughts, to corrupt your motive, your intent, to cause you to create a depiction of the Most High that is far from the reality of Almighty Truth. That's why this vile, little, effeminate faggot of a picture, that's why most people receive it today. That's why these damn lying Baptists and Pentecostals, they will put that damn 
wicked thing up in the midst of their dirty whole houses because it is a spirit of whoredom. And that is what the Jesus, the Jesus damn Christo, that's what it is. I'm not going to respect that Yisraya. I have been befuddled, befused. I have been confused by that matter. I've been tricked. I have been led astray. I will denounce the power of that wickedness. I will not, I will not strive with you in that matter. I will not strive with you, but I will strive against you in that matter. I will not respect that damn vile thing. Not at all. This damn spirit that brought our minds, our forefathers, our parents, and the captivity while someone beating the hell out of you. And this is the image of the most go to hell with that. I will not buy it. I will not accept that. It's wicked. It's wrong. It is the very image that control every damn concept of your mind, every thought, every will, every purpose today. It's the dominant power. And we are so damn emotionally uh, that we say, oh, Rayak, you shouldn't. Hell no. I say it. I'm not backing down. God is going to kill you. Damn your God. He cannot kill me. I lay down my life for you. By the power of his ruach, the sword, you're sure Hamashiach. I'm not some damn butter crunch man. I will, my friend. Hallelujah. These liars. It's a lie. If it's a lie, is it of the truth? How does a lie come? Because it has not been brought forth by truth, isn't it? Jesus Christ is a damn lie. His name is a damn lie. It was not brought forth out of truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. And that's a different teaching. I must go on from here. He pulled out a stone. And he took that stone and he slung it. And he smote the Philistine in his mesach, his metzach, in his forehead. That the stone sunk down into his mesach, his forehead. And he fell upon the face to the earth. And we know what he did from that, don't we? He took the sword of the ruach of Yah. And the same unclean spirits you said would eat me. That's what Bavel has become. The mind that is uh, substantiated by the government of Bavel. That the media or the power of this sex or this bohemoth control us of the beast. Uh, the power of that sex. Uh, that it fills our minds with every kind of unclean uh, and uncaged bird, doesn't it? And the bird represents those things that just con constantly fly at our minds uh, and through our minds and they dump their droppings. Uh, that's what a bird does, doesn't it? A bird, I don't care where you put them, uh, I don't care if it's the pigeons over there, they dump enough droppings, you like, come on. The chickens, the turkeys, and these uncaged, unclean birds, they drop their droppings, uh, their little tidbits in our minds, uh, and those droppings began uh, with their seeds in those droppings, what they have eaten. Uh, and the, that dung began to fertilize that seed. Uh, and we began to see things spring up in us. Uh, we began to see things spring up in our minds against Yah. We spring up in our minds against our Acha uh, and our Hota. Uh, there are things that spring up in our mind uh, against those that teach us uh, the unfallible word of Yah. Things in the daughters and the sons' mind uh, that spring up in their minds against their emo that feed them uh, and their grandmother that they have seen the pattern and the example of their life. They don't give a damn. You're a twisted man. I don't give a damn who it is. Because their minds have become the, the holding place. Uh, every unclean thing. She is the mother of abominations to Aba. Of all abominations upon the earth. What's, what's coming out of this thing. By this massive power of this bohemoth of the six. Is it not unclean things? Is it not Yisraya? I was very reluctant to go on YouTube. Or even do this here. I was very reluctant. And somewhere Allah my Simeon. That kind of convinced me. But I was very reluctant. I'm still reluctant about it. 
I don't like it. But I know that this is an assistant to some out there. But this is not how the power of Yah is going to be revealed. You're sure he did not have the media. He did not have news reporters running to him saying, who are you? It was the element of the power of Yah's truth that even uh, the sounds of his truth travel. There are nations like Pakistan, there are countries uh, like India, whereby there is no media, whereby there's no telephone service, one or two cell, cell phones. Uh, and if they need to get something 500 miles away, uh, they run it, and overnight they have it. The Taliban can be hiding 500 miles away from where the, the assault military might uh, of this global powers against them. Uh, and before the day dawn, they already know where they are. They know their position and everything. Uh, and they don't have satellite phones uh, because they are able uh, to follow the satellite phones. Uh, it is about the power of the word of mouth. Uh, he gave us a faith. He gave us a, a lotion. And there is nothing more powerful than the voice of Yah. As I ark, the seven, the seven verses of Yah is the complete voice of sound. And so that's what this piece is doing. She says, I'm going to replace that. I don't want Yisra'ya to hear. She is after one thing, the zira, the seed. He smote this Philistine in the forehead. And he took the sword... And he cut his head off. That is the only way, Yisra'ya, that this formidable foe is going to be brought down. We must have the Rush Penach, the chief cornerstone, whereby our mind, our concepts, our hearts build off of that sure foundation that Yah has given. Because if not, you're not going to take the head of this bohemoth. He is going to control your thinking. It's going to get, cause that mark to be become in, imprinted in your mind, impregnated. You will wonder why you're thinking crazy as a bed bug. You won't even know why. We all experience that. You wonder why we're thinking like fools and deranged. And because of our ignorance, because of what we have seen, we have looked at, what we have watched. Come on, Yisraya. Yeah. And that is the fact. Have the power to control the young, to make them butcher mama, daddy, and granddaddy, and all. Have the power to control mama, to make her walk in the bedroom, and butcher all of her children, shoot them all in the head. Have the power to create an image in the mind of man, to make him turn away, and walk away from his Ishaw. That's some controlling power to me. And yet we give you no credence in our mind and our thoughts to, that he will control us. None whatsoever, Yisra'ya. This stone, this rush, penan, this ebon, what is it? Is there anything in the Torah, in the Brit Hadassah, that give us some kind of insight? That we, just a stone now, and he brought down the very wide, then he threw it and hit him in his heart. It hit him in his head, in his forehead, his met sack, in his forehead. And it wasn't dead yet until he took the sword, the ruach, the sword of the ruach. It was a two-edged sword. And he cut off his head. The head, Yisra'ya, that is trying to control us, we must cut it off. And that's the only way we're going to do it, through by the spiritual evolution of Yah and Yahshua by the Torah of Yah. I want to begin here in the book of Yeshua, Isaiah. I didn't realize it was this late, but I'm going to move, all right? Give me a little time, Yisra'ya. Give me time to finish. If this damn wicked world can sit before a television six days, point, six point four days, and you tell me we come in here on the Shabbat, we may stay three hours, three, six, nine, twelve. We haven't gotten a day in yet. And on Wednesday, on Katve Imat uh, for two hours, and sometimes we don't have service. You don't even have a whole day we're spent uh, in any kind of developmental approach unto you. Our minds been developed by the Torah, and yet we, 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 you're going to stack that up against uh, 6.4 days against what the enemy has poured in your mind? And you think you're going to overcome? You're a damn fool. You're stupid. It's not going to happen that way. 
That's just television. They're not counting how much time they say. There are folks that have television on internet here. They're pecking here. And they become so slick and so, so vile that they're even having it where you can watch every kind of movie on internet, every kind of television. They, they got it all today. It's wrong, Yisra'ah. Yeah. It's not of you. Yeah. It controls you. It's the sure mark. And everything that is there in Hollywood, it is nothing. Tell me what comes out of Hollywood. Is it not some of the most vilest of spirits? Are they not some of the most unclean things? You got the news reporters, they lie according to their own whim. They're liars. They're corrupt. They're, they're vile. They're self-righteous. They're full of pride. They're hubris. They're arrogant. How do you receive something out of that spirit, Yisrael? Yeah? They're full of death. They're painted up, faked up, false up. Faggots and bull daggers. What this woman name, uh, Medlaw or whatever. I see her all the time on Huffington Report. I'm saying her articles, her face is always there. She's a flat out bull dagger. Says she's going to marry this woman. You got these faggots. You got these freaks. You got these faggots working behind scene. You got these faggots in Hollywood designing. Uh, they're programming. They're the ones doing the programming uh, to make sure that they impart that into your sons and your daughters. Uh, and you sit there like a dumb bimbo of a Jezebel uh, or two cent, two dollar beer whore. And you don't give a damn. Uh, stupid man that has no conscience, no reverence of y'all. But you can sit, sit there after work, you're tired and spend five, six damn hours uh, in front of some dirty slut lusting. Uh, I don't give a damn if you don't love me. You sit your family down, you can sit there for five hours, uh, and you all can't sit down, let's break out the knees, uh, and we're going to get down a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Help me. Uh. Come on. You get bored in a moment. I'm not going to stop, my son. But uh, today, you I preach like this. I mean it. We're not going to be kept by things that soothe us. That's a fact. You, you, you talk to any man that whereby his mother or his father did not correct them. You talk to the one that where the father put that rod on his arse. I heard a man the other day, he said, man, I couldn't understand why my father, my mother, man, they will put that rod on my arse. I didn't understand that. He said, but man, as a man, I understand. I appreciate them. He said, it was that discipline that brought me to this state that I'm in the, today. That I, that's what the world is saying. He was talking about his successfulness, what he has ascertained in life, how he has progressed. He said, but it hadn't been for that rod on my ass. He said that, that there were times I would despise my father. My mother whipped none of her children like she whipped me. She did not whip my sister. She did not whip my youngest brother. It was me. I never saw her whip my oldest brother. I never saw her whip any of them. I was the only one I can recall uh, seeing my mother go ballistic on. She will literally go ballistic on me. And when I say ballistic, take it off. I'm not lying. Take it off. And I was stripped out out of my shirt. That woman will put a drop card on me. And I would go to the quiet place uh, and I would weep. Uh, but I did hate her, you understand. Uh, I would get angry, but I would go back and say, I love it. I would go and clean the house, uh, wash the toilet. She would whip the hell out of me. And I remember one of the last things I said there before she died. That was when the that's the last time I saw her. I said to her, I said, I appreciate everything you did. I appreciate every whipping. You didn't do me wrong. You, didn't, you did not cause me to become dysfunctional. I said, I appreciate you, old woman. I said it like this to my aunt. I won't lie. I said, I'm glad that I was not born in a house with a rich white mom and daddy. I said it like that. I'm glad I was not born in a house that was privileged. I told it to her like that. I'm glad that I was born in this house. I'm glad that you birthed me, old woman. I'm glad. I'm glad that all the things that we thought were hardship, it taught me something because I saw her resolve her resilience, how she cared, how she labored. You understand? 
Hallelujah. The book of Yeshua. Well, I'm going to preach today, don't worry. My Ak Mikaya, he wrote me, he always write me on the Shabbat. And sometime like this morning, I'm running, man. I was, I was running late this morning. And the reason why, because I always get my things prepared on Shabbat evening, what I'm going to wear. Well, yesterday I was tired and lazy. I didn't get it done. And when I go back there to look at colors, I can't tell what color it is. It's sure, what is this? Is this black or brown? Or is this blue? I can't tell. So I asked her this morning, she said, oh, that's black. That's what she said. Come to look at it when I said, that's, that's, that's not black. This, oh, my. And I was running like a chicken with his head cut off. That's what I was. Hallelujah. Can I move quickly? Let me move quickly. Turn with me to Yeshua 28 and verse 16. Yeshua 28, 16. I want to move quickly. Yah says, therefore, this is what the Nobi uttered unto a rebellious house. Therefore, this says the master, the sovereign, the mighty Abba, Yah. He says, I want you to be whole a chain. Chain. I want you to perceive, I want you to see, I want you to understand. He said, Behold, I want you to get the spiritual depth of this. I want you not just to hear it. I just don't want you to shemach. I want you to perceive it. I want you to, to, to bear witness in your conscience. Yah says, I, I lay, I lay. He says, in Sion, to Zion, Zion, Yerushalayim. He says, I lay in Sion, he says, I lay a Yasuda, a foundation. I lay there among my people a foundation. What is the foundation? He says, it's going to be a Rush Pena, a cornerstone, a cornerstone. He says, it is Bahan, it has been tested, it has been refined, the Torah has been tested, it has been tried. And it has been tried against one of the most, uh, tried by one of the most violent of elements. Uh, and you know what that is? I will tell you. Not by Hashatan, but by the very nature of man. By the conscience of man. He says uh, it is a Bohan, it is tested. This is a stone that has been tried, a tried stone. He says, it is a yacha, it is a precious stone. It is of great value, it is a weighty stone. It is a stone that settles. It is a stone of riches and power and excellence. That's what he says. It is a stone of splendor. He says, a pena, a corner. We cannot establish the power of truth without the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. You can read the Torah all you want to, but it has no power at all, Yisraeli. I don't care how you try to participate in the events or the activities uh, or carry out some of the, uh, some of the uh, Sava, the commands of Torah, you cannot do it. Uh, because if you do not have this Rush Pina, if you are sure the power of that testimony is not the very stabilizing, settled force of your mind, you don't have a damn thing. Yeah. And that's the truth. You cannot build a building without a chief cornerstone. You cannot bring it up from the foundation. There must be a stone where my every stone is laid to the palm of that stone. Of all stones, you get the first one right. I don't care how the other ones go, but you'll get them right in line. You bring them back to the course. You got to go from that rush. Penach. You must go from that. And you're sure is the, he is the, he is the, he is the power of Yah. He is the word of Yah. He is the Torah. He is the heart of Yah. That's what he has laid in, in Sion, in Yerushalayim. That's what we're in Yerushalayim. Because it's the city where the Shalom of Yah is taught. This should bring comfort to our bosom and to our minds, Yisrael Yah. Yah say, I lay him there. Not the throne of Tawit. It was corrupt. He sinned against Yah. Not the throne of Shalom, huh? He sinned, not the throne of Reboam, a Yeraboam. They sinned, they fell short, but not this stone. He says he's a prized stone. He is a precious, a yachah stone. Yeah. 
And then not only that, but he tells us that he is a yasat. He is a sure thing. He is fixed. He's been established by Yah. Hallelujah. You can't move him. You can't move that stone. You cannot move that stone. He is a yasat. He is the one that has been ordained. He is a sure foundation. He is a sure musat. You know, that's the name of the Israeli uh, secret service, Mossad, Mossad. That's their secretive force, just like the CIA. It is called the Mossad. And Yah says that your shoe is the sure foundation. And the Mossad is the foundation of one of the most vilest corrupt governments on the face of the earth. And that is the Israeli government. Uh, those in that land that say they are, the, they are the redeemed of Yah. It is not the truth. Or there are those in that land are the redeemed of your sure, just like in this land, just like in China, just like in Russia, just like in Britain, just like in Berg's Head, Scotland, just like in Bina, just like in Djibouti, just like in Madagascar, just like in Suriname, just like in, uh, just like in Brazil, like in Haiti. Come on, Israel. So the Mossad is one of the most vilest corrupt governments upon the face of the earth. They butcher, they kill, they destroy, they corrupt. And Yah says that Yahshua is the Musad, the chief foundation. And he gives us a truth here. Listen. He that believes, not trust but that, amen, that is confidence in the trustworthiness of Yah. That is assured us his faithfulness. That have Imuna to believe him. That, those are the three components of, of when we say Amen. We say Amen faithful. We say Amen. Uh, you can trust it. We say Amen confidence. We say Amen. We say faith. Faith beyond our perception to understand. That's why we say Amen. Hallelujah. He said but he that Amen believe. Uh, he that allowed this oath or this confirmation of the marking uh, of this chief cornerstone, uh, this rush pena uh, in his head, uh, he confirms it by his faithfulness uh, and his obedience unto Yah. He upholds the Torah and the Torah is the power to nourish him. They shall not be haste to do these things. You should not be haste to do wickedness. You should not move in haste to turn to the world for resolve. To satisfy your inward desire and pleasures. When a man delights himself in Yah, Yah gives him the very desires of his love. We delight ourselves in Torah. You're going to delight in Torah. You delight yourself in Yah. You're going to want to delight in Torah. You're going to give your heart to Torah. You want to be nourished by Torah because it is our strength. I don't care how physically strong you get. I don't care what kind of physical shape you're in. Unless you are nourished by the Torah, it doesn't mean anything at all. It has no value at all, Yisraya. None. He is our rush. The rush is the head. He is our rush. He is the cornerstone. He is the foundation. He is our musat. He is the foundation. It is the mind of Yah that takes the covert activities against this power that be to establish in our Rosh Pena a, a foundation whereby it has no power to stand. And that's why the kingdom of, of, of this vile Philistine it had to be brought down. And there's only one thing that's going to bring down the imagination. Casting down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself against the Rosh Pena of Yah. And that's what the enemy is doing. Creating that in the minds of the people that they will assault Yah. But there's a writing in the book of the wars of Yah. It's going to take spiritual men to say this is of Yah or not. Are you a spiritual man? I judge all things. And I am a spiritual man. I can lay the book down as soon as I begin reading. I will know whether it's of Yah or not. There are those that will fabricate. And the simple man, the simple believes all things. And those that are simple minded, they'll believe it. And they, they don't have the ability to, to, to do things spiritually rational. And they say, oh, this is of Yah. That's why Yah never allowed Yisrael to be led of themselves. 
He has always raised up messengers, men, seers, nobi, naviim, and mighty meshilishim to guide them uh, through the very, uh, uh, the, the, the very beauty of Torah and, and the complication of Torah in the sense uh, because the natural mind doesn't understand the things of the Torah. How do I know? Because we're babes, are we not? Does this little child understand when his daddy truly say stop or when he put the paddle to his little butt? He doesn't understand the, the very fruit of that. We don't understand the correction of God. That's why we continue to walk in it. In our own, uh, in our own uh, ways. We don't understand that, Yisrael. We must understand. There's a precious stone. And when, when, when Daiweed, when he went in, in that Orim, in that pouch, Yoshua, he's the representation of the Orim. He is that uh, Tomim, that stone, uh, whereby it was cast, uh, as they cast lots, uh, the stones for the garments of Yoshua HaMashiach. And when that stone is cast, uh, when that stone, uh, it gives us true credence uh, as what to do, when, how, and what not to do. It gives us the pacifics of Yah, and that's what this Rush Pena does. It gives us preciseness, precision, wisdom, and understanding of what Yah commands. And that's why he was in a body. The pouch was the skin of a bull, of an animal. And then that was the precious gems of Yah for the people of Israel. Yah, that the Kohan knew how to use that. And Yoshua, he is the chief Kohan. He came after the order of Melchizedek that had no beginning and he has no end. That is what it represents, but I'll go into that next Shabbat. See, you're trying to move me over there. But I won't go that way this Shabbat. All right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we precisely, or can I say that, this force of hell, this vile thing, this Philistine, this behemoth, and this bohemoth, can I say that this represents a form, a power of government? Don't know where I can prove that through, through Torah, through the vision of the Nobi. Okay, I will begin in the book of Daniel. Yeah. Turn quickly to the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's the one I'm going to bring this thing home. Yes. Daniel, yeah, chapter 2. I want to begin here in verse 31. It's important. I want to move. And this is when the one that is called Daniel, yeah, when he was called upon to bring interpretation to the dream of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And it says here, Daniel Yah says, You, O Melech, Daniel 2, 31, O you, O Melech, he says, So, in the vision of your dream, he said, Behold, it was a ra, a great image it's a great image is that not what this power that be created in our minds images yes. that are great we pursue yes. we want to come on we want that he said this great image he said this great image whose brightness was excellent and all they do is create the images that they're, they're so excellent they're so beautiful they're bright in our minds so we can retain what we saw but we can't retain the Torah of Yah they become more value more important uh, in the Torah of Yah. He said, stood before you. He said, and the form thereof, he said, it was the It was terrible. It was insanely terrible. And he tells him this. The image had. Why the head? Was that not what that we cut off on this vile thing? Is this not where the mark shall be, the mark of the beast? He said, the image head was fine gold. My, my Eva used to tell my, my, uh, my brother, she says, uh, you got a champagne mine and a beer pocketbook. You got a mind that you think is full of gold. You got all the riches in your mind, but there is no productivity from that mind. It doesn't produce anything at all, nothing but suggestions and comments, but there is no substance to your mind, man. She would tell him that. In the days, that's what they would say to individuals uh, that had this arrogant of speech and thought they possessed something. You understand, Israel? It says in his breast 
and his arms of silver, and I will teach this later on, and his belly and his thighs and breast. All of this is vital to know. But I want to drive one point home today. His legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay, a kingdom, kingdoms that was so magnificent and so powerful that there is nothing that could subdue them and bring them down unless there was something that is mighty and powerful, a stone that only Yah has ordained and established. He said, you saw it until you saw this mighty kingdom. You saw this power of grand. He said, you saw all of that. You saw the magnificence of the kingdom, the kingdoms. You saw the veracity, the strength of the kingdom, kingdoms. And Daniel says, you saw that until not just a stone, but he said, that stone. There was a stone. You're sure is that stone. That's what it says. I will prove it out. Don't be surprised. He said until that stone was Geza, it was cut or it was determined by one that had power to determine what, who that stone was. He came out of the bosom of Miriam by the power of the word of God. These ignorant beasts of hell that this was consummated through some kind of a, what they believe, some kind of a, in sexual activity, saying that that's the nature of God. They are stupid beasts of hell. You put things in your children and it grows up the manifest of your power, your nature, and your strength. There is not some kind of intercourse, it's the power of the words. That's how stupid this damnable generation is. Those that reject Yeshua HaMashiach. He said, until that stone was cut out, he said, without hands. He was brought forth without the hand of man. But so how do you cut a stone out uh, of the Rocky Mountains without uh, hands? Yah says, there's one that he, he came out of the hair of the mountain of Yah. He was cut out without hands. hands. He says, he was the one that smote. He was the one that mecha. He was the one that killed the image, Yeshua, without that testimony, that power of Yeshua, the images that this beast created in your mind, you cannot kill them. You cannot destroy it. That stone that was cut out by the hand of Yah, he was the one. You saw the greatness of the kingdom. You saw the greatness of the power until there was one that arose. We saw the greatest of the powers of the world and the world system and the beast mind in us until the stone, the chief cornerstone was laid in us. We saw the activities, the actions, and the deeds of the world of a mind that was deranged, adamant, adamantly against Yah, reject Yah the truth, had no association with truth until the stone was cut out and placed in your heart. It was not one that was cut out by the hands of man. Grandmama, mama, daddy, they didn't cut that stone out. They didn't place it there. It was all mighty Yah. You saw the kingdom power of hell uh, rising up in you, overtaking you, uh, doing every kind of vile, wicked, unclean thing uh, until the stone uh, that was cut out, uh, not by hand, but by the power of Yah, until the day star rose in you. When that stone began to... Uh, Settled down and uh, the foundation was laid. Uh, everything was laid according to that plumb line. If it's not right, it must come out. It must come out. We're dealing with the kingdom power. We're dealing with kingdom powers. We're dealing with the kingdom power and the kingdom is controlled by government. The mind. Our mind controls our actions and our deeds. It's not your hand that controls this. It's not this thing you call the heart that controls it. It's not your kidney, the kidney or, or, or your spleen or your liver. It is from the rush. It is from the rush. And Yah says even all the kingdom powers of hell when we see these four mighty kingdoms, uh, the medio persian the, uh, the Roman, the Babel, and the Greek kingdom, uh, and everything that we know about Yah has traveled through the hands of these uh, dogmatic, wicked men, rulers, uh, powerful, territorial, reign, superior uh, personalities, the powers of kingdoms, uh, 
They have translated, they have written, they have prescribed, they have contrived to us. And now you say, I in the Akhirith, I'll raise up my messengers, I'll raise up the prophets, and they shall speak profoundly unto my people, and it shall come by the revelation of the power of the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. When Yahshua spoke of the might of Yah, when he called him Abba, they said, this is a man of blasphemy. This is a man that speak ill against the Mosa, and they shall not speak according to the norm of the people. They shall not speak to cause their ears to eat, but they will speak to bring down the kingdom power of hell, to destroy it. And they shall leave by the power of their words the stone who has been cut out not by hand, but by the power of Yah, his Geza, his Geza, he has cut and created. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been cut out without hands. And Yah says, uh, which smote the image, verse 34, he says in verse 34, who smote the image upon his feet uh, that were of iron and clay and break to pieces. No kingdom can stand against Yah. No kingdom power in our minds can stand against the truth of Yahshua HaMashiach. None. He says in verse 35, Daniel 2.35, Then was the iron and the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. How Shaltan desired to sift us, as Yahshua said, the kefar, as shaf. And Yah says that this kingdom is going to be sif like shaf. The wind is going to blow it away. What when the winds of Yah's nostrils, the power of the ruachim of Yah, if I get to nothing yesterday, I want to get to that. I want to show you something very dynamic and simple and beautiful. It says, uh, and the wind carried them away. And there was no place. There's no kingdom uh, place for them. No place uh, was found for them. Uh, and it says, and the stone, and the stone that smote the salim or the image Became a gadol, a great high, a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. The power of Yah's kingdom, through the administration of Yahshua HaMashiach, is going to fill the whole earth. For his kingdom shall rise up out of the ruins of Yahrusha, like him with the kingdom of David was, that is. And the power of the earth is going to resonate. That's why we go into Yahrusha, like him. Because the shalom, the assurance of Yah and Yahshua, is turned on to us. That's why. He's going to rise up greater than the Rockies. He's going to rise up greater than Mount Everest. The standard of Yah shall fill the earth. The powers of the forces of hell, they shall not rise up again. Once we become steadfast, settled and unmovable, there's a weapon in hell that rises up against Israel shall overcome for the man of your shoe is the man of your is a mountain you can't go over it you can't walk around it you can't dig down to the root of it and get under it but this man in this kingdom rule of the beast and man and their complete religious system of ordination to acknowledge how shaitan and man and the proclivity that is not and the wickedness of man is going down to the pit of hell. It's going to be broken up. It's going to be dissolved. That's why Yah even allowed the hands of Shatan in this nation. I want it brought down. I want it consummated into the rule of six powers. Some of the most corrupt minds of men. You look at these men like Murdoch. And all of these wicked men. They are corrupt. They look like children of hell. They look twisted. They are unclean men. They are satanic. They are vile, wicked, corrupt men. And they have no capacity. No ability to love, no ability to care, they don't give a damn. You don't like that, find you someone else. I have no problem. You cause us finance anyway, and you don't send one damn nickel to heaven. But you make sure Murdoch stays alive. That's right. You make sure Time Warner stays alive. But you don't make sure the truth of Yah stay alive. Isn't that a damnable, abominable thing? 
Folks can have cells and they can keep all that up, but they will not give a damn nickel. They will sit here and become extortionists and eat until their damn bellies are busted. And they will hear us. When I say sit there, sitting there listening. And not give one damn nickel to strengthen the hands of this truth. And you can search the web and all you want to. There's very little out there. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. You're not going to find too many that's brazen like me. Brash. Hasn't been trained by the, by the system. Hallelujah. We can think we're doing kind deeds for each other. And your sure said the, the poor has the message of the Bizarrah. Talk to them. And you don't give a damn. So if you turn me off, I don't care. Hallelujah. You shouldn't talk like that. These individuals, most people don't even give a damn about Yah. But they love Walmart. They love Time Warner. They love their damn cable. You're wicked. Don't tell me you love Yah. You go to hell with that. You go to the Baptist preach and tell him that. You're not telling me that. That's a fact. They got money for everything but for Yah's truth. Can I move on, my young Ark? Okay, I will. Hallelujah. Verse 36. He said, the stone smote the image in verse 35, uh, and he became a great mountain. Verse 36, uh, this is the dream. He telling, this is Daniel talking to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, my friend, we shall tell the interpretation, uh, the Pesha, thereof, before you, my Melech. I'm going to tell you what this dream meant. And I don't want to read all that, but I will get into that at a later time. I will, Yisraya. I'm not going to hold back anything in this teaching. There are things I can add. And there are things on Chetve Imat that I can teach as far as uh, refining things as our Zachins will do for other Zachin will do for us. All right. He says, I will tell you the dream. In verse 37, he says, you, O Melech, you king, you, O king. He calls him the king of kings. Who is the king of kings? Only Yah is the king of kings. But he says, you're the power of all powers. There's none like you. You're splendid, you're excellent, you're beauty. He says, king of kings. He says this, for Yah, the mighty one of Hashem I am, has given you a kingdom. You tell me a vile thing like this, that Yah gave him a kingdom? He has given the kingdoms into the hands of the wicked. Nebuchadnezzar, this man, he said, I want you to know, O king, that Yah, he gave you the kingdom, a kingdom. He gave you power, he gave you strength, and he gave you wealth. O United States of Hashatan, Yah has given you a kingdom. He has given you, isn't that three uh, four most dynamic things? He's given you a kingdom. Uh, and he established within this kingdom uh, the very parameter of the mark of the beast. Your religious constitution of everything is acceptable. Every kind of practice is validated. Your economic proudness and power that no one matches it. Your wealth, the concentration of all the wealth. You own more wealth than, than three quarters of the world. Just by yourself combined. He said, oh, you're right, king. Yah gave you that. Oh, America, your kingdom is coming down. You've been establishing your images all over this world, but it's coming. Oh, your internet is coming down. And you that listen and you don't even consider Yah, the strength is coming down. You will not be able to hear. That's why we need the Ru'ah. Of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that all right? He said, I gave you all that. Moving quickly down to verse 45 for experience. Hallelujah. He saw this restored kingdom. And Yah must restore the kingdom in our minds. It begins in the Rosh Pena. Yahshua must be the cornerstone in order for the kingdom or the power of the kingdom to be effective and to work. Daniel Yah 245. He says, for as much as you saw the stone, Yah allowed you to see this stone. Hallelujah. As the old woman would say, as I see him, as I know he is tough to me, as I know it. He said, for as much, Nebuchadnezzar, for as much as you saw 
the stone was cut out of the mountain without hand and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold. He says, I want you to know that the great one, the mighty one, almighty Yah, the great Yah, has made known Yada. He has caused you to experience, to understand, to the Melach, the king, what shall come to pass after. You go to see the hand of Yah, what shall come to pass afterwards, hereafter. And the dream, he says, it is yath, yath, seed. It is sure. The dream is the truth. The dream is of certainty. The dream is a sure thing. Now, this is not something you dream because you had a whole rack of lamb. He said, this is a sure thing. This is a sure dream. He said, and the interpretation thereof, uh, it is... Uh, it is the truth and it is right it is a sure dream or the interpretation I give you you can bank on that well, what are you giving us today my friend you're speaking to us I'm giving you the sure truth today I'm giving you the sure truth unless the power of your sure rises up in our bosom like a, hair, like a mountain of great strength to shatter to break in pieces all of the activities uh, of the powers that be uh, to destroy even uh, the ability of the enemy to imprint, to tattoo, to mark our minds uh, as though that our minds are against the very order, the principle, the Torah, the commands, the mitzvah of Yah. It must take place uh, unless he arise. And he has arisen, he arose from death whereby Yisrael for many years they were tormented by the power of death. Because it was their sins, Yisrael. He has taken upon himself the sins of all Yisrael. Scattered throughout the nation of every, of every shade of color he has taken upon that, Yisrael. He must arise. He has to. And this kingdom power of darkness cannot be shattered. Is that going to be done by the Jesus, the lords, and their gods? Is it going to be done by the hair, the mountain of your strength, by the stone who has been cut out, not with hand? He's the foundation. He's the Rosh Pinah. It's like building a building that is 10,000 miles wide. Just give you an example that is beyond our ability to comprehend. You're trying to build a building, one building. I do it this way, that extends uh, from here to Charlotte, one building, 50 miles, one way, 50 miles, uh, and the city of Yah is 1,200 miles uh, in every direction. Can you imagine what it would take to build a foundation, put the what? You couldn't do it. It would crack. The building would not stand. And yet there's a, rush, a foundation of stone that all Yisra'ya. The weight can't crack it. The weight of our sins, the weight of our wickedness, the weight of our ears, the weight of all of our misfortune cannot even put one down. Not one bone was broken in his body as this man brought out to us. Not one thing can be broken. It won't shift. It won't be moved. Nothing at all. We need that Rush Pena. That is called the power of the Torah. Yeshua said, I tell you, you religious whores. He said, not one jot. He said, the heavens, the earth shall be removed. It shall be thrust out of its orbit of flow. He say until one little small fragment of the Torah of Yah is this matter nothing. I don't care how this man tries to, I don't care how this religious whore tries to remove Torah delight and Torah truth. Uh, nothing is going to pass from it. Nothing is Yah. Not at all. And this mighty power that die we fought. The nations are against Yisrael. When you find the collective people scattered abroad, whereby every nation, the people, they suffer the greatest of the inhumane condition. They suffer the greatest uh, uh, of great uh, of onslaughts. Uh, you find a remnant or zero of Yisrael there, Yisrael. They hate it because, uh, did they hate Yahshua without a cause? They hated him. And there are people on the earth that hate it because they have not done anything at all. We saw this in this nation. There are a group of people here, those of the diaspora, they were hated and they had done nothing. They had not done a thing, Yisra'ya. 
Was not the mind in a formidable way created to create a, a dislike for people for what? What had they done? They had not done a damn thing. And there are people throughout the earth, they're hated. It makes no damn difference the color of their skin. They're hated, they're despised, they're butchered, they're killed, they're rejected. Yes, yeah. We wait for the day star to arise. Hallelujah. We're going to rise and be him. That's the truth. The dream is sure. The writings of this book, they're sure. It's a true interpretation, Yisrael. You can bank your, your nephesh on this. You can put your life on this. You don't want the odds. You just lay your life down upon the stone. You understand? We fall upon this stone because if this fall on us, we're going to be crushed to pieces. That's why Yah is trying to save us, your shakas. He doesn't want the media. That's why he wants us to come out of her. Come out of her ways. Don't let her train your mind. My imas, don't, my ima, don't, let, don't let the world train your children's minds. Don't do that. There are things as we go, we, we, we will allow certain things to transpire here. But I'm not, going to, I'm not going to connect this way of life to the way of the world. That's why these beasts that were here, they can't live like this because they're selfish and they're greedy. They got their own individuality and it's not so. We are Eckhart. Yeshua said, I pray, Father, that they will be Eckhart, just like you and I. We are one. We think. We act. We honor. We go by the same system. Our minds are shaped by the same thing. Don't you know that the world or the power that be of this mark, they all will think alike? They're drawing up their war plans with their gods against Yah. And yet we need to understand the book of the wars of Yah. We need to resurrect that. Hallelujah. That's what we need, Israel. Yeah, we need men, uh, young men that are strong. I'm not as strong as these young men. Uh, I'm not as strong as them physically. I, I don't have the capability. Uh, you got to have a certain amount of strength to resist the powers of hell. Uh, not only is that agonizing to get the rock, but it's in the flesh. That's why the enemy has distorted our eating. We eat any kind of damn way. We don't give a damn. We don't care. And the enemy has incorporated every kind of unclean thing in our habits uh, or the way we eat. That's what we need to come out of her. My people touch not the unclean things of the world. Uh, come out of her we grow our food we raise our babies we feed them right we make their minds strong we develop their little minds and their little cells and quit feeding them this damn mess at these filthy cafeterias at school they're eating this damn slop they're not growing they're lethargic they're slow they make them drunk you wonder why your babies can't learn hell you they're not feeding this then you come home and they sit down in front of the damn television five hours and you sit on your lazy arse the house is nasty it smell like a piss pot it stinks come on talk to me I'm not backing down. Dad is lazy as hell eating pork chop sandwiches sitting over there. Come on. Cannot go around. And then your little hoish daughters serenading like little sluts. My daughters are saved. You're alive. They're not saved. The dirty little heifers. You are not even right. Hallelujah. Well, you don't know me, preacher. I know I don't know you. That's why I do know you. Because when you take a rock and hit old pig, it will... Oink, 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 oink. I remember one time years ago, I was about 15, 14, 15. Went with her, uh, her brother. We went to visit some of their kinfolk somewhere up in the country. I don't remember. And they had pigs. And I don't know, for some reason, I was just mad at the pigs. And he and I, we tried to... We, we tried... We, we tried to kill them swines. We got rocks. I'm not talking about no little stones. We got rocks. And we pumped them rocks in on those pigs. And you should have heard them just oinking and oinking. So when you hit a pig, they're going to oink, oink, oink. So the pigs are going to fight back. Hallelujah. I want to, I want to finish this. I have a few more minutes, all right. Hallelujah. Well, that has nothing to do with us. This Rush and Pena is going to restore the head of Yisrael and bring us back to the ways of Yah. And there was a Nobi that saw things in a way that I don't see them. His name is called Zachariah. Zachariah 3 and 1. He talks about the restoration. We have been trained by the whore. We must be restored for the hour that we're in. We're running against the clock now. When one goes to build, when one contracts out a building, they know it will take them three years to build. Like they say, we want, we give you four years. And they know with difficulties and downtime, it's going to take four and a half years. You understand? The song we used to sing, uh, is getting late in the evening. 
And the sun is going down. You can't work at night. We must work while it's day. In this nobi with profound utterance of wisdom, Madhuru Akabya, he speaks to us here in Zachariah. Hallelujah. I want to finish this and we're going to close. Let me move. I have a few more, right? I'm tired because I, I, I laid out my nefesh last night. I did. Because there are people that are ignorant. They don't know. I'm appalled at my ignorance, even as I am today. And what things, because I was unlearned it. You're not going to get this kind of truth out of books and things like that, I'm telling you. Unless you raise up the conscience of a man, you're not going to get that. And that's a fact. You think you're going to get it out of the books of Benny Hens and these damn beasts? And these mega whole houses? It's not so, Yisra'ya. But the Nabi cries out unto us for this generation this time in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. He says that the Melach, he showed me Yahushua, Yahshua, not only that he showed me that he was a Kohen, he was a Kohan Chachadol, he was a great high priest. He was Yahushua, Yahshua. He said, I saw him standing before the Melach, the messenger of Yah. That's what a Melach is. He is a messenger. He dismisses the message of the power of Yah. And he brings the revelation of Yahshua. He fights against the forces of hell to make sure that that is imparted into us. He said, the Melach of Yah. He said, when I saw him, I saw this most formidable vow thing. He said, I saw Hashatan standing on the right side. Does it say? On the Yamim. We'll teach on the right hand the mark of the forehead in the right hand. We're going to deal with the forehead, the marking of the, of the sign, the six of the forehead, the 666. This religious conscience, this mind that these homongers teach us that you can have all you want to get greedy. And even there's no conviction at all, even under their theology that you're sinning and you're walking against the Torah of God because they, they have disdain for the Torah, they dispel it, so you're free to do what the, whatever you want to. He said, I saw her shatan standing at his right or his yamim. What not at his left hand? But he was standing at his right hand. Your sure sits on the right hand of Almighty Yah, doesn't he? So he knew that uh, Yahushua, he was this Kohan HaKadol. And he said, I shall be the strength. The right hand is of great value. We will understand why the mark shall be in the forehead of the right hand. Even when a man is left-handed, he greets the man to shake his hand with his right hand. Even when a man is left-handed, no one walks up to you with a left hand to shake hands. You don't want it here left-handed. No left-handed. You what hand you shake the hot with? Huh? I don't shake with my left hand. We shake with our right hand. I don't even like the hand shake that this nation prescribed to. I like my hand shake with Yosef. When I was in the military, we had some daps that you couldn't come in a place unless you dapped everybody. It was no handshake you walking in like that. You had to come in there. You had to. You had to. You had to adapt everybody. What's up, brother Rob? What's up, baby? Boom. 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 Had to. You had to adapt everybody. When you left, you had to adapt. You had to adapt. You had to greet everybody before you left. It was no walking out, skinning and grinning like a clown. You had to dap everybody. We had daps that would take uh, five minutes. Then we had some that would take 30 seconds. But you had to give up a sure dap. That's what they call a dap. You had to give everybody some love. That's a fact. Okay, how you felt, you had to get some dap. No, no, no pumping fist. No. You had to give up some dap. And so he saw this beast, this unclean spirit, this unclean thing on the right hand, 
of Yehoshua. Well, why was he there? Why? Let me show you. Let's move on a little bit, all right? And then the mighty one, he saw how Satan said in verse 1, on the right hand, he was there to Satan, to resist. That's what the word resist means. When you resist the truth, Yahshua said, why you saw Satan? Why you resist the truth? And he was there on the right hand to resist, to oppose him. He was there to oppose this one that Yah had elected. And Yah said to Shatan HaShatan, it says that Yah says, Yah Gara, Yah says, I rebuke you, I corrupt you. You are corrupt. That's what he says. That's what this Gara is. Gara. Not rebuke. He did not Musa. He said, Yah rebuke you, O Shatan. Even Yah, I love this part, even Yah that has chosen Yerushalayim, the city where his name is. He said, he has rebuked you. He said, is not this the Ud? The Ud? It's one thing about the Ud. The Ud represents, uh, you, you know, when I go to the house, uh, you're turning the embers of the stove to make sure that it all gets hot. Uh, so when you lay the log on, that's going to catch a fire. And that's what this Ud is, uh, that the, the turning of all the world. You have tried to turn the world. You have tried to ooh the world, Hashata. I'm giving you that power. And all of a sudden you turn uh, over everything to find every true uh, Yisraelite. And here is an embroom. Here's a steel one that has the light of truth in them. And just that one little light of truth can ignite the whole house of Yisraelite. You understand? That's why the words of Yah is important. That's why we need the, uh, the mental labor. That's why we need that. That's why, Yah, I pray if Yah grants us the fund that no ark has to go out, we will do it from here. We will have time to study the Torah every day. You understand? We have an hour in the Torah. Come in here at noon and study Torah. To rest from the heat of the day and eat. That's the way Yah intended it. Having food and raiment, we got food, we're eating. But the selfish beasts of hell, they don't give a damn and they still don't have a damn thing. Can I move on? Hallelujah. He says uh, that this, uh, this embro or this, th this one, uh, Yah says, uh, he has been plucked out of the fire. This one little embro has been, embro has been plucked out of the fire. Now Yahoshua, he was clothed, it says, with uh, filthy begat, garments of treachery and filth, verse 3. And he stood before the Melach. He stood before the messenger of Yah. And he answered and he spoke to those that stood before him saying, Take away the filthy of the begat, the filthy clothing from him. And to him he said, Behold, he said to Yehoshua, I have caused your iniquity, your ovin, your ovon, your wickedness to pass from you. And I will clothe you in the change of Ramid, the Simla. And then he said this, listen now. We cannot have the clothing of Yah with this baggage, this filthy, treacherous mind that we have. The garment, the baggage represents the mind. That we are treacherous toward each other. We are cold. We are nasty as hell. That's the way of this beast government. It kills its babies, it crushes the poor. And when you are nasty as a damn beast, you don't care about Yisraya. It's only me, myself, and I, and you don't give a damn about I. Because if you don't care about I, you cannot love your Re'a like you love yourself. And that is the spirit of this world to inject, to create, to promote this most selfish mentality that we all carry, Israel. You give a damn about no one that has no physical attachment against you. You will cover their damn sins. You will watch out for their damn wickedness. And yet your shoe is your friend, isn't he? Is your shoe our friend? I call you no more servants but I call you friends because you know the will of the father you don't give a damn how they insult him yeah. Yeah. hallelujah yeah. Yeah. 
We just don't give a dime, do we? Huh? You say we love y'all, we're liars. Promote every kind of vile, wicked thing. Everything that is corrupt, you promote it from here. You concur, you agree, you hide it. Your shoe is the one that cover our sins with his dumb. You never hide any damn sin. We hide our wicked ways. Isn't that what the beast is doing? He's hiding this in our minds. And we hide it. So Yah gave us a process. We confess our faults one unto another. Then he calls us to pray effectually and fervent. Because when I confess, confess my faults to him, he's going to begin to confess his to me. You understand? And we see where we both have fallen short. And then we'll understand that we are fr fragile, we're weak. If it wasn't for the mercies of Yah, then what will we do? Then he calls us to embrace each other and care for more each, each other. That's one thing I don't like is the damn moody, twisted, duplicit spirit. I don't like that. Y'all really, said, I, I would that I would be hot or cold because you're lukewarm, you're a damn hypocrite, you're up to date, down tomorrow. You happen to, ah, ha, 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 that you can't even speak the next day. Come on, talk to me, Yisrael. Something is twisted in your damn mind. It's a damn mind. It has damn, it has built a dam, an enclosure of wickedness. You can't even hear you You have no sensitivity to what is kind and right. How kind someone is to you. You don't even know how, you don't even know how to reciprocate. Something is wrong. I don't want to be like that. As a young fool, my email, when I was there, I would cry, y'all deliver me. Yeah. I don't want to be like this. Y'all is crazy. Help me. Yeah. Oh, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> and this damn generation is so insensitive to y'all. It thinks it's getting by. And all we're doing is Causing our bodies to retain the chemical uh, mess to destroy us. Keep on doing this. There are us that can't even get from under that. Because you're entrenched in it. Hallelujah. And the reason you're not in your shoe, because in your shoe I can do all things. In the power of Torah I can do all things. Moving on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your shoe, your shoe was clothed with the Medak in verse 3, verse 4, uh, verse 5. Then he said, let us set a fair, a tachor, a ceremoniously clean mitre, or a sonif, a turban, where? Upon his rush. To let Hashotan know that Yah speaks from this summit. To let him know the power of your sure speaks from this mind. To let him know that the total sum of this man, he has, been, he has been birthed by the power of Torah. The sum of this man is the equivalent to Yoshua HaMashiach. The value of this man, he said, set a turban. I want you to set a mitre upon his head, his rush, his summit, that his mind is governed by the cleanliness and the power of Almighty Yah. You can tell what one has upon their head. There are those who look at you and say, what's on your mind? What's the problem? Oh, everything is all right. You know everything is not all right. It's best to say, I'm nutty, I'm stupid, I'm going through some damnable stupid mess. I don't know how to correct myself. And that is the correction right there when you confess it. When you hide it like a wicked one, you will never find resolve. You will never. That's how you correct it. That's how you come from under it. We used to sing the old song, tell him all about it. Oh, you can tell yeah about it. Oh, tell him your story. Tell him. Yes. Well, I don't see Yah. You see the greater power of Yah. What you see in Yisra Yah, you see the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. It has just been corrupt. That's why the garments, uh, the, the baggage of uh, uh, Yokohana and uh, 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 of Yoshua, Yahushua, it, it, it was unclean. And just the power of the voice of Yah, just the Melak, the messenger of Yah said, uh, now change his garment. Change it. 
And he was made ceremoniously clean that he could present unto Yah that which was acceptable before the mighty one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, set a might upon his head. Uh, and it says, so, so, so they, now not just one, they, 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 set a might, a fair might upon his rush. And they clothed him with the same other garments. Uh, and the melach of Yah, they stood by when they saw that. And the melach of Yah, this one, he ood, he protests. It doesn't mean that he was upset and mad. The word ood also has the indication that he restored. He made sure what was restored. He relieved. He protests to Yahushua saying, This says the great one of Shava, of great power of Yah. If you will walk, if you will halach, in my derech, in the way of the Torah, if you will keep my charge, my mishmerech, his functions, the obligations of the Torah, then you shall also judge my house. For the man keeps the charge of Yah, he has the power to judge Beit Yisrael. He said, and also Shema, or keep my courts. He said, I will give you places to walk among these. Who are these before Yah? He said, I will give you a place, listen to this, to walk among these that stand. He says, Shema now, O Yahushua, Yahushua, the Kohan Hagadol, you and your fellow. He said, you and your Re'ach, you and your companion, your friend. Now here this man, he is already deceased now. But this is the prophecy to give us indication of the power of Yah to restore our minds. That we come out of this whore that our minds are not marked by the mark of a B666 or man. A mind that is totally deposed of receiving anything that is pure of Yah. He says uh, that sit, listen, I want to read that again. Here, you now, O Yahushua, Yahushua, the Koan Hakatol, you and your fellows, your Re'ah, your friends, companions, companions, and the fellow citizen in the kingdom, he said that sit before me. This is Yah, you hear me? For they are men, for they are men, for they are men, wonder, they are men of more faith. They are miraculous. They are symbols of men, the power of a man. When a man sits and stands before Yah, that's the symbol, the power, the more faith, the example of Yah. When a man sits before a damn television seven days a week, that is the symbol, the, the, the exact power of the mind of Hashatan. Hallelujah. If we are, no, we don't allow them here. If we had them here, we would sit that day in and day night. Hell, you have one in the dining hall. You have one in here. You have them in every house and in every bedroom. It will not be here. I don't give a damn what anyone says. Hallelujah. He said, for they are men of wonder. They are men. They are men wonder at. You just, be, you're amazed with them. He said, for behold... I will bring forth my servant, the branch. The Semech. Who is this servant, the branch? Look what he says now. In verse 9. He says, for behold, the same stone that Daniel. He says, for behold, the stone that I lay before you, Yahushua, upon one stone. Upon one stone. Yahshua is that stone. Listen. Upon one stone shall be... Shiva, seven ayin, seven eyes upon that one stone. Seven ayin, the mental, the spiritual faculties uh, of the mind of Almighty Yah. He said, Behold, I will engrave or protect the graving thereof. I will write upon the Rahim, upon that one, uh, or the seven eyes. And the seven eyes represent a Pacific, and I want to bring that out today. And you can only have this if that chief cornerstone, uh, or the Rosh Pina, is what we build upon and from. Says Yahweh of hosts, he says, only by the seven Rahim of Yah, the seven eyes, he says, and I will remove iniquity, from that land in one day. We are the Erech of the other land, are we not? In one day, all iniquity, all evil, all will be removed. 
Well, what are these seven eyes? We taught that here. They're one of the servants of tabernacle. I want to remind you of that again here quickly in the book of Yeshaya. That's why I could not leave this stone unturned, the stone out of the bag of the sheath that Daewid destroyed this Philistine. Out of the Orim, the stone out of the pouch, the body of Yeshua, the stone out of that heart. The kingdom of Yah shall have its preeminence and power upon the earth. Yeshaya, Isaiah 11, 1. These are the seven eyes that Zechariah spoke of. One stone shall be seven eyes. Does it say that or did it say that in Zechariah 3, 9? It did it say that? Yes. You that at home, did it say that? It said that. Seven eyes in one stone. A eye in a stone, it has a greater significance than that. It says here in Yeshaya to understand the dynamics and the depth of that. Yeshaya, Isaiah 11, 1. It talks about the power of this stone that shall come forth, this branch. The Shebeth, this branch that Yah shall establish out of the dry ground. And he has. He said, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Yeshai. He said, and it shall be a netza, a branch. And it shall grow out of the Shereth or the root of the branch. We must be grounded and rooted in the love of Yah. He said, it shall grow out of the root. And he commands, he tells us, he shows us the seven eyes. In verse 2, he says, and the Ruach, the Ruach HaKodash, shall rest upon him, shall Nuach. Nuach, it shall rest, it shall feel his bosom. It begins with the Ruach HaKodash upon him. And he says, and the Ruach of Huchmah, the skill to fight the spiritual battle that Yah has placed us in to fight. That's why we must seek the wise men to understand the book of the wars of Almighty Yah. We must, Yisrael, I don't give a damn of your educational background, your skill, your inability to read. We're not led by your reading ability, it's by your Ruach. And your Ruach shows your labor in everything you do. It represents the power of the Ruach in you, Yisrael. In your labor, your work, your actions, your activity. He said, the Ruach of Hukmah shall rest upon him. He said, and the Ruach of Bina, the power to discern. That's why these books, when they're men with the Ruach, he will read and say, this is of Yah. No, this is not Yah's writing. This has not been prescribed. Yah's mind is on man. Yahshua is a rush, a man. And that is why this beast stood on the right hand of Yahushua, trying to dethrone him, saying he is filthy as vile. You think he doesn't go before Yah accusing you? See, look at her. Self-righteous man. Look at his failures. He defied the Torah. Just like the Melach of Yah camp about those that fear Yah. There's a demonic power that stays 24-7 in your sleep. He watches over Yisra, over Yisra, yeah. And he wants to make sure the writings are right. The Melak that says, oh, Riyak Daewid, he shouldn't have did that, but that's what he did, yeah. Yahshua says, uh, let it process through me. I'm glad of that. And he goes through the right hand. Yahshua looks at it and says, overturn, justified. We don't do it willingly. There's not an intent or motive to have disdain for Yah. The seven eyes, the seven ruachim of Yah. He says the ruach of understanding of Binah, the power to discern. He says also the ruach of, of Itza, of counsel. The ability to advise in the counsel and the purpose of Almighty Yah. We know how to advise individuals to do wickedly and to do wrong. We know how to advise each other to hide sin and to cover sin. But we don't know how to advise one another in the purpose of the counsel of Yah. That our rush may be established. It must be established, Yisra He says, and also in the Gibrah, or in the might, the strength, and the power of Yah. He says, and the Ruach of Da'at. The Ruach of Da'at. Uh, it is the ability to have Yah's perception, uh, his ability of his wisdom, uh, his knowledge, his counsel. You have all of that. You have the ability to discern, to know how to utilize all 
that Yah has granted unto us and it resides in the Rush. That's where the Ruachim of Yah, that's what gave life to the Rush. You understand? He says, and above all, then the Yare of Yah, the fear of Yah. These are the seven eyes and the foundation. And we build all things and we are placed in our proper alignment, plumb to that Rush, Pena, the chief cornerstone, the foundation, Yisraya. And everything comes from out of us, it must meet to that standard and that expectation. That's why the powers of this beast mind, it is against Yah. When you find anything rising up against you, a will to dis dispose or depose Yah. And to dispose of truth, you know that there is something vile there and unclean. We should be ikat one with one another as Yah and Yahshua are ikat. One in the Ruach. Didn't we used to sing that song, one in, the, one in the Spirit? Let's draw back on that one. See, I'd like to hear it, all right? few verses that I'm going to close. I wanted to begin this with the teaching because Zakin Yaramiya, he brought out to us, uh, you know how to, the seven voices of Yah and to hear and how Yah speak. I wanted to show us even today the mark. And even though there are indications of a mark, you don't see all the marks. I want to show that next week, maybe Yah's will, I began there and continue in this path. Because there's more to, the, to this rush, all right? Hallelujah. I have a few verses here quickly in Giliana Revelation. Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. Hallelujah. The magnificent throne of Yah, the power of His throne. And the throne already represents the rush. He says, immediately I was in the Ru'ah. And behold, a throne set in Hashem I am, and one that sat upon the throne, hallelujah. I didn't copy all of that. Let me read this quickly. I was in somewhat of a haste this morning. I got up late, 7.20. I like to get up at 7, hallelujah. Revelation 4 and 2. He said, and immediately I was in the Ruach, and behold, a throne was set in Hashemayim, and one that sat upon the throne. And he looked, and he looked like a jasper, a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about his throne in the sight like unto an embryo. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seat I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their rush on their head, a crown of gold. And he tells us this in verse 5. And out of the throne proceeds lightning and thundering and voices. The power of Yah that cannot be expressed in no other way. That's why it's important that our rush be endowed with the seven Ruachim. He said, and there were seven lamps of fire. That's what the Ruchim, the Ruach does. It burns like a fire. He said there were seven lamps of fire burning before the cat say the throne of Yah. And what are they which are what? The seven Ruachim, the seven Ruachim, the seven spirits of Yah. So it's one thing the seven or the Ruachim of Yah, they burn like fire in us. The Ruach of knowledge will burn like fire. The Ruach of the fear of Yah burns like fire. The Ruach... Uh, of the Da'at of Yah, the Deum burns like fire, the Ru'ach uh, 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 Binar burns like fire. And so the Lushaf and those that are weak, it burns them up, but it must be in the Rush. And so collective, they are, they are united uh, under the power of the Ru'ach, uh, they are the seven Ru'achim, the seven Ru'achim uh, of Yah, they're the seven spirits of Yah. Yeah. And a lamp is near, it's meant to shine light, doesn't it? So when you have the Ru'ach of, of, of Da'at, Everybody will know it. You don't have to. You, it shines. A light leads us, doesn't it? Hallelujah. These are the seven Ruachim of Almighty Yah. You're sure speaking to us as he did unto the Pharisees and the disciplined ones in Matitha Yah 21 42. It says, You're sure. You sure, you're sure said unto them, Did you all ever read in the Chaptuv? Have you read that in the book? of Tehillim, he says the stone which the builders rejected or refused 
Matthew 21, 42, Matitiya. The same has become the rush penna, the head corner. This is Yah's doing. Do you hear that, Yisrael? It's not your doing. This is Yah's doing. And it is marvelous in your eyes. He said to them, you can boast all you want to, but this is what you see. This is Yah. They can say what they want to about you. Say what you see here, this is Yah's doing. It's not my doing. And isn't it marvelous what he has done? Isn't the works of Yah marvelous? He said, have you read that in the book where that, uh, the stone that the builders rejected? Uh, it has become the rush penna. It has become the head uh, of the cornerstone. It has become the headstone. Uh, he said, man, you know that's marvelous. This is Yah's doing, huh? C come on. What can you do about it? This is Yah's doing. The kingdom of the powers of darkness. Yisrael, this is Yah's doing. You should say, isn't this marvelous? Yah has raised up this beast mind, and his mind is going to shine in the excellent. Oh, come on. This is Yah's doing. That's why we rejoice, Yisrael. In all things, we ought to give Torah unto Yah. In the beast kingdom, give Torah. Come on. In all things, just say to that, to God, thank Yah, hallelujah. I close with this last one out of the book of Ephesians 523. It says, for the ish, he is the rush of the wife. You see today how these Jezonites today, just like Jezebel, Isabel, and Nebar, she ruled the man. His name means fool. The ish, the man, is the head. He is the rush. He is the cornerstone of her strength. As a man, I'm not talking about a boy. A man stands before Yah. He delights in Torah, his truth. He says, as a man is the head of the woman, of the wife, even as Hamashiach is the rush, the head of the Yisraelite congregation, and he is the Yoshach of the body. He is the one that saves the body. It is the government, the mark of Yoshua. That Yoshua, that mind, that government pleases Yah in all things. It is the mark of the beast and man. Here is wisdom. Here is knowledge. And we must have the Ruach of wisdom and knowledge, the Ruachim of Yah, to understand the mark of the beast. You will never understand it. By thinking that it's going to be done by some computer chip and all that damn folly. We'll get into the depths of that as we proceed. May the riches of Yah rest upon Yisrael. May he strengthen us. May we all delight and comfort and the assurance of the Torah. May he fill our levim with great delight collectively our hearts in the one heart, the one mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And may we rejoice in the abundance of all of his isha, his happiness that he bestows upon us. Gets me. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. As we turn toward Yerushalayim, the city of Yam, we do barak you for this day in Yahshua's name. We ask that the power of your Torah, the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach, the stone that has been cut out with our hand, will be our rush pena, the power of our head, our thinking, our government. We pray for Yisrael, Yah, Yah, cleanse us all as you did with Yahushua, as you cleanse his garment, the Melach, your messenger. Let them bring the truth untainted, unadulterated, and cause it to burn like fire upon us as your people. Help us all and strengthen in Yahshua's name. We pray for each one here. Those that join us, we pray for them that you heal and touch. Barak, your people, I pray, and cause their hearts to give. Yeah, we're not beggars, but we do need their help. We have not because we ask not. And I ask those that have joined us, send an offering to help in Yahshua's name. We ask all of this in the mighty name of Yahshua. We pray for all of our listeners, the homes, in Yahshua's mighty name. With our voices, we cry, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yabrak. Yeah.